Okay, so I'd just like you to check my working on this. Uh, there's some very unusual things occurring, unexpected. Um, I want to be sure I've got this right before I uh, do anything like a presentation. So this is um, the NCBI page for um, for SNORD 30, 35B. There it is. So if I copy and paste this, um, there it is. Uh, I just tidy that up, then convert thymine to uridine. Still five prime to three prime direction. Just move that down a bit. Um, I'm looking for uh, convert t t turn it around to uh, three prime to five prime because I'm hoping to match it up with uh, with R1 obviously. Uh, R1 between these locations here is this section. You can see already there's there's some complement complementarity just just by cursory look there cursory viewing. Uh, this is the uh, prediction from the algorithm, the software that I'm, the analytical software that I'm using. Now you've seen this before, I think, um, and the, the I've looked at it many, many times, and I spoke to the uh, the designers of the software as well. The way to l think about this is not as a so much as a 2D beat on a string type of representation, which is very useful, but it's not uh, the whole story. Um, you have to think of it in terms of 3D um, series of helices with little kinks there, very, very small kinks. RNA does this all the time, as you know. There's a loop there as well, a very small one. Um, so the algorithm is saying these things could happen, probably revolving around this core here, or possibly this one, um, and the rest of it could be happening at the same time, it could be happening intermittently, it could be happening transiently. But if it just reduces down a little bit to make it more a um, little easier to see. Um, the uh, the complementarity is astonishingly good. It's about eighty percent of this of the uh, of the snored. Uh, if you allow for uh guanine uridine base pairing for instance which is perfectly reasonable. Uh, there isn't too much of that happening, actually, looking at it. Um, but the, the match is very, very good. Um, so far, so interesting, but this is where it gets really odd. I do the same thing with Snora 29. Copy and paste. Tidy it up. And convert uh, thymine to uridine. I was having a look at this uh, section here highlighted in um, uh, Snora 29. This is 5 prime to 3 prime. Again, reverse that, so it's 3 to 5. Um, there was a section of HAR1 that was showing up quite good complementarity. Uh, that's the printout for that as well. Again, uh, a series of two major helices with a couple of little smaller ones and kinks in between. It's a very, very small loop there. Again, pretty good, pretty good matched, and the binding energy is very good. But this is where it gets really odd. So this sequence here, UG, AA, through to AG in HAR1, is there, UG, AA, UAG, in, in uh, blue typeface. That's the complement, HAR1 complement to Snora29. The green typeface is the HAR1 complement to uh, SNORD 35B. Now, I don't like coincidences in chemistry, <laughs> um, and I find this very difficult to explain. So just check my working, see if I've got this right, think about if I've made a mistake somewhere. But the fact that the SNORA 29 complement occurs in exactly the same sequence halfway along uh, as, as the Snord 35B, um, I find it very difficult to understand. I haven't found anything else like that. Um, this is the only pair that seem to be doing it. Um, that's it, anyway.